investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Wednesday, the 2nd of March. Can have to get used to saying March. Um, and we're looking at the Dow of 340 point, uh, well, 339 at 33,631. Yes, a nice day, but that was really ugly yesterday. And look, look at these dreaded H's, the lowercase H, that arch formation that takes out the left side low. So this is going to be really important. What happens with the Fed? And, and you... Think if you're the Fed right now, you're saying to yourself, whew, inflation, oil, just screaming to the upside with absolutely, there is no light at the end of the tunnel for oil at this particular stage. We gave up our independence and now we are just completely waiting to see what, where, what, how. Will crude oil prices come down in the shorter term? In the longer term, sure, that we can do things, but shorter term, that's a real issue. So I think, and and I'm going to put this in the context. I, you know, it's all very well talking about winners, but we also have losers sometimes. I thought that Six Flags Entertainment was a sure way to play the uh, comeback kid, uh, maskless, getting together outdoors, the return to normal. I, and it just hasn't done that. And uh, so I, Six Flags Entertainment, it's not like Disney. It doesn't have that whole media aspect with Disney. Um, also in, the, in a, an H pattern right here. Um, not a great chart pattern. But I thought Six would be the one to, to really lead the way. Six Flags, S-I-X is a symbol. Um, no, it's just, I think that has to do more with the oil uh, situation that the price of gas is going to be a hindrance. I wouldn't think so because if people have been waiting and waiting and waiting to go out, that extra cost of gas should not be. Um, oh, G7 says Six Flags is not well run. You know, I I do remember a, a while back that there were there were there were problems, but it's still <laughs> outdoor entertainment. Anyway, it's not working, and that tells me that. In this particular smorgasbord board of, of choices to have in the stock market, there's a way to look at it, and the way to have been looking at it are probably is just if crude oil right now uh, trading from a low just a, what a, what, let's, let's go a, a month ago, so the start of February in the 85 area, and it's trading at 108 now after hitting 112 uh, this morning. That is a theme, and that theme is going to stay even if there is some minor discussion about you know, our using our reserves. You could do whatever you want, but the most important thing is we're not we're not actually increasing the output, and that I think is the issue. So I'm saying that you've got to now be really careful um, in this particular period because yes, we do have the TLT uh, pulling back. Uh, pulling back today down a dollar twenty-two at 140.08. And I it's gonna take a while to figure this out. This is gonna be when you look back and you say, oh, but the fact is throughout all the years, the decades that I've been looking at the market, the the expression that I've always had is that when the key equities stocks become volatile. Wall Street parlance for going down. Money comes out of those stocks and into the safety of bonds. Well, we've had this two month correction, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment, but a two month correction, and yet you've had a two month correction in the TLT. <laughs> so the yields have been going high, and that's just saying to me that no matter how we look at it, the Fed is going to have no choice but at least to be contemplating a slow move to uh, raise the rates. 
what what can what can we do? That's the, just the way it is, and that the force of the higher yields is saying that the normal liquidity of getting cash and putting it into somewhere where you can grab it immediately and use it, like in bonds or fixed income, that hasn't worked because that force of the driving force of the TNX, here we go, TNX.X, there we are, the TNX, which did make a peak D in the, uh, I think it made it peak D, but it might have gone just fractionally higher. I forgot to update that. So the high in the 10-year yield on the 11th of Feb was 20.63, that's 2.063. And on the 16th, it was 2065. So it did go to peak E. And now it's pulling back like you'd expect in this particular pattern. But it's still near, uh, it's near the highs. If you look at it in the monthly chart, look, monthly chart went to a peak C, higher highs and higher lows in a stair step move. So this is something we have to watch very closely, just in terms of what are the yields going to do. I have called this a peak F in the weekly chart. It might be a re. Um, um, renamed if there's a higher high above that uh, 20.65, I think it was 2.65 level. Uh, we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, you can tell that the Fed is going to have to talk about, they've had this mantra for so long, but then they're going to have to talk about inflationary aspects. Then they're going to have to talk about the overall economy, because there are some really there are great pockets of strength. But when you look at RHI, which is uh, Robert Half, it almost looks like the yield, 125.77, 122 round number low. This is Robert Half International. These are jobs on the 9th of Feb. Comes down to a low of 111, bounces up to the 120 area, and is now trading at 115. I, I have to say that um, the, the, the job demand is incredible, and the jobless rate is very low. And yet we might not be filling jobs in time. And that's what this is saying, that this is such a convoluted market environment that, as I've said to subscribers, raising cash is really important. We've, we've had to do that. We've done that. We've got small, very low priced and um, near term trades and the only trades at this particular point. And I just think conserving cash is just cash is king. That's all that I can say uh, right now. So let's go on. We're looking at silver SI. Silver is trading. Uh, that is down today, down uh, 0.3 at 25.22. I still see it. And there's a good chance of making that PD. It's not the greatest pattern in the monthly chart, but the weekly is starting to make the cup shape formation. It's improving. The daily uh, has had a really good rally from 22 up to the 25s, that's really impressive. And it's holding near the highs. So I think that gold is still in play as a geopolitical instrument, a safety, a, I call it an icon of fear. And that's where people are gravitating to. If you're looking at the dollar, now here yeah, you see, but I've been talking about this for, for quite some time now, as when people say it's different this time, then someone listening rolls their eyes and says, yeah, yeah, we've heard that before. If you let me tell you, this is different this time. Um, we've got crude oil screaming to the upside. We've got this whole thing going on with yields. We've got inflation at record increments. And just it's gone exponentially higher in the shortest period of time. This is different. And also we've got some retail stocks that have done fantastic, but the retail index is not doing well. I've got a whole bunch of questions that I'll do with the suicide return. Now it's now up to five. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, this is a question for Daniel. VST uh, is a question. This is uh, Vistra Corporation. I believe I uh, said that correctly. Yes. Uh, electric power. It's an electric, uh, operates integrated retail and electric power generation business primarily in markets throughout the United States. Um, if you're treating this as a dividend stock, I'm going to say here 2191. I can see uh, it's stuck in a range. So, yep, you can go down a point and a half maybe. So that gives you a 5% risk to the downside. And maybe the uh, dividend is in the 4% area. I'm not sure. And on the upside, I might even be stuck. I, I would put a rectangle formation here. And I'd even make it narrow at first between 2250 and 2150. So I, I would say if you are in it and you're holding it as a dividend stock, I think it's reasonable to keep holding it. I think that it's it keeps coming back to the midpoint. That's the most important thing about the rectangle formation. So even if it pulls back, it should come back into it's a 2191. It should come back into the 22 area and test it. So as a dividend stock, I say, okay, would I buy or sell right now? I'd probably say at this point, I would just look at it. I'd want to do a little homework and see if does the dividend make up for any risk if I want to actually get out at the dividend, which I haven't received yet, then I then it would be a loss. If it's a dividend play, you've got to be looking out past the dividend. And that says to me, it could be in a range. It needs to break into the 24s to really say that it can go back to the 28 level, the high that was made in 2019. Um, but at this particular point, it might just be stuck in a range for a while. So I hope that helps you just in terms of, oh, perhaps an acquisition target. Wait, are we talking about the same thing? No, we're not. Okay. So as if that's that's the uh, answer there, in, in the way I see it. The other thing that we're looking at is I didn't finish uh, looking. I wanted to show you. Look, the dollar has gone to a new uh, recovery high. The whole area that I've been pinpointing for quite some time of 90, is it 97 something or was it 98? 90, let me just move this chart. Look, there it is. So the weekly chart, I'm expanding that now so you can see I've had this huge cup formation, but I was looking at 97.80. That was the high roundabout May or so of 2020. That was the first big resistance area. We're in that right now. We're testing it. The MACD actually hasn't yet turned positive. Uh, it's trying to. Uh, we've got a month. It just started the new month. So we'll see what happens. Stochastic is quite weak. So I'm looking at the dollar index and saying the technicals are so far are good enough to say that the weekly chart 
needs price to move higher to really get everything in sync. In, in sync. But at this particular point, it also says that the dollar has very strong support in the 96s, and it's a 97.68 right now. Um, I'm going to do this as well because that's what we need to do. And the monthly chart has extended leg C. It didn't look like it was going to do that. Uh, it looked like the just sideways consolidation could last a little longer, especially with gold soaring as it did. And this is just, remember, I, to my eye, I've got this, I, I've called it before and I said, Vixie, Bondi, Dolly, and Goldie. Uh, the, you've got to think of these as almost independent because each one's relying, often they go to get, together in, in counterpoint. So the dollar goes up, gold goes down, or gold goes up, dollar goes down. Uh, the VIX index has to do with the stock market. Um, Bondi, the bonds, they're in another world altogether. And if you're looking at uh, gold, as I said, gold is, is really um, a proxy for fear geopolitically. Uh, there are other things that go into it, but that's the way I like to look at it, just to make it as simple as possible. And uh, yep, gold is sparkling at this particular point. But what's really important is that the dollar, even as of now, I think that the United States economy is still one of the best in the world. And that's really what the dollar is saying. So I treat the dollar as an icon. Just it's like a visual, immediate representation of how we're doing uh, in the economy. And it seems to me that Donald's saying, so far, we're doing OK. That's number one. But also, as a currency, a world currency, it's still the dollar that, that countries around the world will drift to. So that's the other thing. So I'm trying to separate all these things. Uh, crude oil, oily. I never did include oily. I should, of course, have. Uh, Dolly, let's have alphabetically. Bolly, Dolly, Goldie, um, and Oily, and Vixie. So now we've got Oily as well. Uh, absolutely. And oil has become, well, I'm not going to go into that. All I can say is that in your, if you're running a country, I think you have to consider the hum human side. You have to consider the ecological side. But you also have to use the practicality. And the practicality said to have done it so quickly just to stop our pipelines and all that. And to, to you can say do it environmentally, but you can do it over a period of time. There's not this rush. Everybody says you've got five years or 10 years. We've been hearing that for 30 years. Yes, absolutely, it's important. But I think you have to consider the human. Don't tell me that the price of oil going through the roof isn't a hardship on 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 the poor don't tell me that uh inflation look at our dba this is the um, db agricultural fund at 21.59 and just uh, a month ago it was trading in the 19th don't tell me this is not inflation that hurts the poor people it hurts everyone but so i, I that's my my complaint here is that i i'm looking at this and i'm saying how do we extract how do we extricate ourselves from the, the the situation we're in right now i just don't see how it can be done easily and that says in the market i have to now start to consider a lot more uh, i have to spend a lot more time now talking about this if this in the chapter wave in the s p is a peak b that's one thing it says that at some point we should everything should everything should come right and the market should soar into the 4820s above the 4818.62 all time high and we go to leg C but almost all the other look at this the Dow the Dow monthly chart peak E the QQQ monthly chart peak G slash C could easily become a G the um, IWM monthly chart peak D so the only one that's not in, look at the XLK. This is the uh, Select Tech Spider Fund, peak D. Uh, we can just go on and look at the semiconductors. Uh, makes a peak F slash C, but a really like a double top that could be peak C1, C2, and a peak F. So I have to consider that there is just that possibility that we're looking at a much longer timeout in the market, and it could actually accelerate for the first time i have to say i have been talking for a long time that it doesn't matter if it's a peak year how deep we go 
as long as we don't break probably like 3,500, I have to say, you know what? I don't know if we're going back to the C and the D in 2020, this year, 2022. But I want to keep that in mind that that's the reason why we've raised cash. That's the reason why I'm saying uh, over a period of months, if you've been putting a little bit in uh, into the market, this is where I'm saying I'm going to be looking at this in such a way that says over the next week or two, am I going to say, why not take a little bit off to get more cash? If this is your long term plan, why not build up a little position uh, by going back uh, whatever position you put in, say, the last position, maybe take it off. I'm, I'm, I'm not above saying, hey, this peak B in the monthly chart, I don't know how else to count it, but I've got to respect the candle that I call the Chapway Roman candle that was made in January. I'll be back in a moment. That was at 260. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Uh, Fed must have said something uh, in the hearings this morning uh, at uh, Dow Zone up 371. I uh, just did a 160-point uh, rally at 3,647. Very interesting. All right. What we're looking at here is uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin's trading up 425 at 44,665. I should mention that although we have a tiny core position still, we did add. Uh, we've actually got we had one position split in two. We've got one left. Um, and uh, it's trading at 44,605. 44, Until it really closes, 
above the 45,700 area where the 200 period moving average is, and then treats this whole area between 45,500 to 45,700 as a support level to move higher. Um, this is just a bounce and it's going to have to try to push above. It's It's been difficult to do up until now for at least since it broke down and below it, around about the 22nd or so of January, below the uh, 200 period moving average for Bitcoin BTC. And now what we're looking at is it's holding OK, but it needs very quickly to turn this in, in the weekly chart to get the MACD, which is the histogram. The reason why I liked it is that the histogram was improving. The stochastic did turn up It went from uh, single digits to uh, teens and now it's in the 24% area. I did not like the fact that you made a W formation in the on balance volume. And that's saying, whoa, it needs a lot more strength and on balance volume to 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 sustain the move. Just uh, maybe a trading, just a trade at this particular point. We'll see what happens. But so far, it's out very nicely. Uh, we're also looking at question about ARKK. ARKK is, in fact, um, this is. Arc Innovation ETF. Um, we do have a position in it. We tried. To, I tried to get a very small position, um, just as a trade today. We, that got taken out, but actually it's trading at 65.84, really close to actually 65.15. I think we actually got stopped out of our positions, all of them. Um, we got in really nicely and it ran very well to 71s from the 65s, and now it's given it back. I don't like this action at all. I wanted the really beaten down tech sector to have a counter trend rally almost against everything else. And instead, I mean, let's see what happened to CRM. CRM is salesforce.com. Salesforce had a good earnings report and spiraled up. It hit 217 this morning, announced at 203. You see, this is my biggest complaint. Um, yeah, I always talk about. Benioff, is that his name? Um, he is the greatest salesman of any company that I've had since Bush. That was Bush from, what was the, um, what was the medical technology or medical instrument company here in Watertown, Mass? Um, and he would talk about the stock and, and, and Bush and just it hype it, hype it, hype it. And then it would come out, uh, it would gap up the next day, and then the, you'd find out, oops, well, that was something he was hoping to do in the future, and then the stock would drop. <laughs> it was just it really not. But Benioff seems to have always produced the goods for uh, Salesforce.com. So I don't know what's going on here. If they're doing so well, why on earth would it go from 311 back in November to a low of 184 a week ago, uh, just over a week ago, and now uh, it couldn't hold the 217 area. What well, and I must say, now what I did say a long time ago is that Benioff has got this. Um, uh, he's not talking about his company as much as he's talking about uh, the environment. And I always think when a uh, when a leader starts to lose focus on what they their major uh, objective should be or their charter is. That always makes me worried, and uh, so I'm just I'm saying, uh, yeah, I hope he hasn't lost his focus from the numbers. It didn't sound like it, so we'll see what happens. So um, it is a great company, and Salesforce I think is one of the leaders in the cloud, um, going from a peak D in the monthly chart. Uh, all that, look, and there's the Chapman Wave Roman candle, that third candle. Look at that, and then the whole candle of last month was a, another Roman candle. So if, um, Salesforce starts to uh, Close on a weekly basis below 200. I have to say that's not that's not good action at all because that kicks in for that wick to say we could retest the low of 184. That's all I'm saying, and I hope it turns around by the end of the day and screams to the upside. Okay, now a couple of things. So that was so ARKK. I'm just saying that is really disappointing. It had an opportunity. That is uh, Kathy Woods. Kathy Wood. Zzz. I think it's Kathy Wood is her name. Uh, this is this is really the area. This is where you've got Triple D. You've got all the stocks that actually are really good companies, and they just not look at this. I, I must have come out with earnings. This is 3D Systems. It's trading at 17 uh, one day, and then all of a sudden yesterday it gaps up and spikes as an open of 20. 
an open of 20.51. It's trading now at 16. Ah, this is not good action at all. So that means this particular sector is still under tremendous pressure. Um, and that's that's really important. Now, I, I had a couple of questions Can get over here and over here. Let me just quickly see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just want to check things out. Oh, gasoline numbers are coming out. They are, are out. Let's see what the USO is doing. USO, wow. At 7345, up a dollar 63. There was a name change. It's in a G slash C in the daily, leg D in the monthly. And United States oil fund LP is in a leg D in the monthly. This rectangle, I never expected that in such a short period of time you would get a move that went to high highs and higher lows in a stair-step way in a very, uh, I mean, it was not even stair-step, it was almost a straight line from the low that was made under 20 to where we are right now at 73 and it's technically the candle high that I'd spoken about some time ago and then just completely forgot about. The candle high was the high of March of, of 2020 at 81.40. <clears throat> and that would be a target over uh, the next couple of weeks. Whoa, whoa. What are we talking about here? I mean, that, in fact, is a serious issue. OK, next thing we're looking at here is um, we have Victor in Paramus, New Jersey. Hey, Victor, how are you? Good. How you doing? Um, Steve okay. wrote that um, Planeteer was a strong buy at 1143 last uh, Friday. I spoke to him and now we're hitting that point. What do you see going on with this? Are we doing like a white shape? Is this a flag or we're going to retest like? In the 10 so let, 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 the, let the chart itself tell us what's going on. The monthly chart had what I called an Eiffel Tower straight up from the IPO area around about uh, seven or so, and it screamed up to the 45 area. And was it 45 round number? Let's just check. I usually put that in. Uh, that high was uh, right there. Uh, the high was. Wait, 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 wait. Why, why does it not give me the correct number? Uh, yep, 45 the round number high. Yeah. So 45 round number high. And what happens at that 45 number round number high? Let me just type it in. R N high. Um, it plummets down. And just the other day, it goes under 10. It goes to 9. Was it 965? Was it 9? Uh, 974. 974. So the bar that that bar, that day of the bar that made uh, on the 24th, that made that high, that's not a leg A. It has to move one bar across to make a higher low to start a wave count. So it's made an A and now it's down 60 cents at 11.58. This is a really good question, Victor. I'm going to take just a moment. We've got a break coming up if you can hold. Because I think yeah, I'll hold. Definitely. And it fits the category of okay. arc. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back, and we are back with Victor and Paramus, New Jersey. We're just looking one second at Palantir. Yeah, yeah, I'm just on the phone. I'm like, we're looking at Palantir Technology Inc. Software Platforms. Has hit, it starts off as an IPO in the 9 ish area uh, a year ago or more, and then it screams to 45 round number high in the monthly chart, and it fails and it comes all the way back down, and now it's at 1150. So, Victor. Let me just show you something. I don't know if you can see, but I'll, if you look at this uh, um, later on, mm -hmm. dollar, I question the den about Dollar General. So I grabbed the chart of Dollar General. You can see it too has made a high up in maybe the 240, 240 area and plummets down to the one, uh, what is that, 186 ish. And then this is a move. This is a much better bounce because it's a single leg A to the upside. The MACD's improved, the stochastics improved. On balance volume is not great, but it's improving. Whereas in Palantir, the, the move down is such that it's get. I'll tell you what I would look at. If at any point Palantir starts to trade for a week and a half, it needs a whole, almost two weeks of trading above 14 to say I have that gap that was made on the doji high of the 16th of February of 14.26, and the next day gaps down with a high, uh, the low was 13.66, and the following day the high was 12.70. When that gap in the in the 13s gets filled and it's moving <clears throat> higher, to me that'll be the first sign to say now it has got legs to go to the upside. At this particular point, the struggle. If today was instead of being down 68 cents, it was up 68 cents, I say, wow, now it's starting to tackle that gap. It hasn't done that. So I'm just saying, from my work, I don't see anything yet, even, even as a trade on this, because today was a key session and it's failing. Mm -hmm. So I, um, for, for me, I'd stand aside. I'd actually wait for strength. I'd wait for a new leg to the upside above yesterday's high. And then I want to see how it's holding in that gap in the 13s. And then we'll have a look at this. Call me if that's what happens. And then I'll say, hey, maybe now it's going to show because that weekly chart is still very ugly. Uh, so I'm yeah, just saying about, I'd about, step uh, away. Do you use volume? I use on balance volume. And the on balance volume is just kind of okay. It's not telling me anything uh, in the daily right. the weekly chart. On balance volume is actually improving a little bit. So is the histogram in the MACD. But I need, to, I, I can't see a 67 cent decline today. It's really important. Today was no more than maybe 30 cents. And tomorrow was mm -hmm. at a new leg higher. And it's not doing that. So just as we're speaking, I don't see anything. I, don't, I would step okay. aside on this. Hope it helps you. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. Yeah. So Bye. let's go to the one that I was going to say was it was a very good example of a much better pattern. This is dollar general trading up 
a dollar eighty nine and two hundred and two point ninety four. Forget about price. I'm just looking at chart formations. See what it's done. It's pushed above. So far today, it's pushed above the high of the 18th of 201.60. On balance volume is not that great, but the MACD has moved up. And look at the stochastic going so quickly from the uh, under 20% to 64%. That at least is a better sign to say that maybe it's a little bit more energy. And if it can get to 207 uh, by maybe Friday, that will be really good action because I say next week we try to tackle the 214 area. So that's dollar general. But I do not want to see this just talking about patterns underneath 197 and it's a 202. Anytime in the next three days, if it goes under 197, I say, uh oh, it's copying Palantir. It's going to be uh, fading. So the questions, other questions that came in, uh, could I look at MOS? This is Mosaic. Uh, beautiful move. Uh, especially in the last week, going from the 42 area to 54, up 232 today at 54.19. Um, yeah, these, and, and I was sent by a, a subscriber a bunch of these in the phosphate, the fertilizer area. They are really, I don't know, can you say on fire in a fertilizer area? Anyway, uh, in phosphates, this is really good action. Is it getting overbought? Well, yes, it is getting overbought, but leadership and stocks that make new highs, especially in an environment like this, even if they pull back, they tend to stay in the new high list. So that's really important. Um, another question, I, well, not a question I had, was CLF. This is Cleveland Cliffs. Um, another nice day today, up 41 cents at 23.70. Um, this is in a rectangle formation, but doing really well. This is flat roll steel. If you're looking at X, this is US steel. Uh, this one, oh, look at that, even higher today, up 97 and 28. So is this now the United States? Is this our economy? Is this infrastructure? Or is this to say, hey, we are losing from Ukraine and many other places. We are losing um, the product itself, steel. It's just not coming in, and we, we, we need it. All I can say is I'm looking at the chart. I don't want to get into anything other than to say the chart is saying with the SLX, that is the steel sector acting so well that it is in play right now. And as long as the technicals hold strong like this, any pullbacks are going to probably be cushions of support. So, and, and that's the reason why I'm saying this is such a bifurcated, trifurcated market with so many areas. Why on earth would the steel stocks do so well when? Uh, the economy is going to be hurt. We know that it's going to be hurt if if the uh, the grains, if the oil sector, if everything that we need is moving higher. Are we going? We, there's just no question that you're going to be looking at some inflationary aspect. Where does that fit in? That look steel. For automobiles, uh, I, they use my, mostly aluminum. And so look, Ford is, yeah, at 17.46, trying to make the, the, 50, the 1691 200-period moving average support. You're looking at Alcoa, uh, AA, and it made a new uh, all-time high. Yeah, well, I don't know if it was an all-time high, but at 85-something, it's trading at 80.43 right now. This is on. This is just really in favor right now. So isn't that when we're looking at the infrastructure area, we'd be looking at something like J, uh, Jacobs Engineering, Jacobs Engineering at the bottom. Now, uh, um, what I would like is for Victor, look at the way that this broke out. This is almost like the, what I would like to see in Dollar General. This is exactly what we're looking at here. A, uh-oh, something's going on. Did something just hit me? Um, yep. uh, I hope you can still hear me. I just heard something that said I might have been cut off. So um, just someone in the den just put in a Y if you can hear me. So this is uh, Jay is Jacobs Engineering up 272 at 125.73. Um, yes, good. OK, it's moving from a low that was made. Look, it makes a high up in the 149 area and it tumbles down to 114 ish. And now it's at 125. That's a better chart pattern. So what I'm looking at here, I, I'm saying, hmm, Jacobs Engineering starting to move. We've had the steel stocks move. We had Alcoa lead the way to the upside. Is there something that's going to be discussed? Is uh, the, uh, Will the president talk about an infrastructure play? 
that he's going to put in place. Um, maybe, I mean, the way these things are acting here, that's kind of what I would expect if there was talk of in infrastructure, a new infrastructure bill. Hmm. This is going to be very interesting. I'll be back in a moment uh, for the final segment and we'll wrap it up. And uh, tomorrow I'll be doing my show at 8. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Yeah, we are. I hope you're back. Can you hear the Dan? I don't know what happened there, but we're back. And we're looking at Jay Jacobs Engineering, a nice move up at 126.71. This is what you want to see as a starter position that has the potential to move higher. It doesn't say it's going to. It just has all the ingredients. Stochastic turned up from under 20% to over 20% in the Chapman methodology. The uh, price moved up. And the MACD started to turn around, actually turned around almost uh, the same day, and that's really important. So these just starter positions, and if Jacobs Engineering is starting to move here, that's really very important. So here's the other thing. Um, so a couple of questions came up. I'll just try to deal with them one by one. So the VIX index, 
The volatility index is pulled back. It's down 71 cents at 32.66. If later in the day, the volatility index in the afternoon actually continues to pull back and goes under 32 as the market, the Dow is up 345. If the Dow can hold 345 and actually start to increase later in the day, that'll say, phew, at least there's a little bit of a rally, a re relief rally here. The S&P is at th up 38. You want to see that expanding as well. Any pullback with the S&P down up only 16 and the Dow uh, only up uh, maybe 90 and then failing in the last hour to actually garner traction, that's not good. So this is just, we fraught with, with, uh, with uh, a bunch of issues and it, yes it's oil it relates to many other things but oil is key so keep your eye on on what is holding here because the whole today into tomorrow that says that's good action um have a wonderful day i'll be back tomorrow for my show at eight to nine eastern time and uh it'll be replayed have a wonderful day see you. Great, great programming